1992, Bill Clinton is elected president, defeating incumbent George H.W. Bush and businessman Ross Perot. Johnny Carson retires from The Tonight Show after 30 years and is replaced by Jay Leno. And Superman dies at the hands of a monster called Doomsday in Superman issue number 75. 1992 was also a banner year for Microsoft as it launches subsidiaries in many different countries, including South Africa, Chile, Greece, the Czech Republic, Poland, the Middle East, Colombia, and Russia. And while Microsoft continues to expand around the globe, in early January it makes an expansion of a different kind when a portable computing initiative suite of technologies is announced. Later that month, on January 28th, Scott Oakey, Senior Vice President of U.S. Sales, Marketing, and Service, retires. Microsoft promotes Jeff Rakes, currently Vice President of the Office Systems Group, to fill the position. The following month, on February 3rd, Microsoft announces a new organizational structure and outlines three centers of strategic focus, worldwide product development, worldwide sales and support, and worldwide operations. The company creates a corresponding three-person office of the president to be filled by Michael Maples, Stephen Ballmer, and Francis Gaudet, who will report directly to Bill Gates, chairman and CEO. On February 18th, Microsoft announces that it will, along with Intel, R.R. Donnelly and & Sons, and Ziff Davis Publishing, host a three-day Windows hardware engineering conference for manufacturers of personal computer systems. In March, Intel and Microsoft introduce a new specification in beta form called DBMCI. It will expand the media control interface for the Microsoft Windows graphical environment to work with current and future forms of digital video. And lest you think folks at Microsoft are all work and no play, on March 17th, Frank Gaudet, Executive Vice President of Worldwide Operations Group, leads dignitaries from Ireland and Seattle in Seattle's 1992 St. Patrick's Day Parade. It's lights, camera, action on March 20th, when for the first time TV ads are used to promote Microsoft Windows to computer users who don't necessarily read computer magazines. The commercials, which will run on network and cable programs, stress how easy personal computing can be with Windows. The commercials also promote Microsoft business programs designed to work with Windows. Three days after the ads begin to air, Microsoft announces the Microsoft Certified Professional Program. Microsoft certification measures expertise, which helps ensure quality support to end users and company personnel. March 24th sees the company expand once again, as Microsoft and Fox Software announce that they intend to merge. Under the terms of the final agreement, Dave Fulton and other Fox employees will join Microsoft. And on that last day of March, Microsoft teams up with OEM's computer resellers and component manufacturers to pre-install Microsoft Windows version 3.1 on a wide variety of personal computers. April 6th proves to be a momentous day as Microsoft ships Windows 3.1 with more than 1,000 enhancements. The new version creates unprecedented user demand with more than 1 million advanced orders placed worldwide. On April 7th, the new pen operating system, aka Windows for Pens, is announced. It is the only operating system that combines full pen computing functionality and full compatibility with Windows version 3.1. More than 220 hardware and software companies have announced support. April 15th is a victorious day for Microsoft. The U.S. District Court of Northern California rules in favor of Microsoft in the ongoing Apple copyright infringement lawsuit. Now, unfortunately, April 29th finds Microsoft doing some very surreal damage control. In response to an inflammatory newspaper article in the New York Post, Microsoft announces that there are no hidden messages contained in any of the Wingdings fonts in the Microsoft Windows operating system, and certainly no hate messages against any religious or ethnic groups. On July 6, 1992, Microsoft demonstrates an early version of Windows NT at the Win32 Professional Developers Conference. All conference attendees receive Win32 API Preliminary Software Developers Kit for Windows NT, which contains an early release of Windows NT. I think this is probably the biggest gathering of PC developers that there's ever been. In fact, we've overflowed the uh, capacity of the Moscone Center. Windows NT is a very safe bet uh, for the MIS community. Uh, that is because it's not tied to any particular hardware manufacturer or even any particular hardware instruction set. And so the kind of independence we're providing and the kind of tools that will be out on this platform really make it the safest choice for MIS development. It's no accident 
that we called this conference the Win32 Professional Developers Conference. The focus is on the application programming interfaces that enable developers to write an application once that runs on a family of operating systems, including Windows 3.1, as well as Windows NT. Well, for a long time, people in MIS have faced a dilemma, which is should they go for PC software, which had a wide variety of application software available, or should they go for a mini computer or Unix style software, which had uh, more features but much less software available? What Windows NT does is actually solve that dilemma. For the first time, they can really choose an operating system that has the high-end features they need, as well as the wealth of application software. We've really built in the network capability into NT and interoperability with other systems, um, other PC networks, um, Unix systems, um, even connections to mainframes and whatever. So it's a system that will be able to work on the desktop uh, compatibly on the server and um, grow with the needs of an organization. I think the group that will get the most benefit from NT will be the uh, MIS groups because this power combined with great applications really opens up uh, new opportunities for them. Their end users want the benefits of PCs and they want to write applications that have no limits in terms of providing business information. Later that month, on July 29th, the Microsoft Developer Network is announced. Now this new customer service is established to support all commercial and corporate developers writing applications for Microsoft Windows. The MDN will write and publish in-depth technical and strategic information on programming for Windows. And the software keeps coming when Windows for Workgroup 3.1 becomes available worldwide on October 27th. Another big date, November 10th, when Microsoft Chairman and CEO Bill Gates and President of Intel Corporation Andrew S. Grove announced the two companies shared vision for the next wave in personal computing, digital video computing. Microsoft announces Video for Windows, which incorporates Intel NDO technology that will allow users to integrate digital video information into applications that run on Microsoft Windows. Six days later at Comdex, Microsoft announces the availability of Access Database for Windows. It is the last major announcement in a year that sees Bill Gates receive the National Medal of Technology, becoming the first person in the PC software industry to do so. As 1992 takes a bow, Wayne's World, Aladdin, and Basic Instinct dominate the box office, and Microsoft dominates sales, pulling in a jaw-dropping $2,758,000,000 over the year. And like the year before, the headcount swells dramatically to over 11,000 people. But 1993 will bring creative new software and a tragic loss to the rapidly expanding company. Yeah.